I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal, is with me. And most importantly, Robert Clara, the author of the new book, The Hidden House. Harry Truman and the Reconstruction of America's Most Famous Residence is here with us. Robert, we broke off at the dramatic moment of the entry of two heroes. Major General Edgerton coming home from the redirecting the Tigris and Euphrates in 19, around 1949 is my note. And a man named John McShane of Philadelphia. You dedicate the book to his daughter, Sister Pauline McShane, mm-hmm. who was still with you with us while you interviewed her about her father, a man who was cut out of credit. Those two men are principal in getting this done because there is nothing but delay. So much delay that I think Harry Truman declared war on the Reconstruction more than he declared war on the Soviet Union at the time. Yeah, very much. As though the Cold War weren't enough of a problem for him. <laughs> uh, well, you know, Harry Truman was something of a hard ass, as everybody knows. And um, uh, fortunately, the two men who were in charge of the renovation, which was uh, uh, John McShane, the general contractor, and uh, General Edgerton, who was sort of like the man on the ground who made sure that the cement mixers kept turning, uh, they were pretty thick skinned men. And uh, McShane, at that point, had already uh, built some of the most important buildings in the city, uh, including the Pentagon, in 14 months. So he knew how to get things done. Uh, Truman rushed them, though, because Truman wanted to spend at least a year in the reconstructed White House. He felt that it was his right, since he had had the foresight to rebuild it. And because of the delays, which were really nobody's fault, they were caused largely by the material shortages brought on by the Korean War, um, their job ran behind schedule, and of course, like everything else in Washington, over budget. And Truman was consigned to Blair House, which we now house dignitaries in when they come yes. when they come to visit. Now, uh, Truman had some uh, wishes when he developed and designed this reconstruction, including a balcony. Why was that so important to him? The balcony was a really strange episode that came right before the White House gave its final signals that it was getting ready to drop on everybody's heads. And Truman had always been of the opinion that the South Portico was what he called uh, not an architectural balance. I know he's really sure what that meant. What he really wanted was to build a porch on the second floor. And while he gave a number of long-winded, diffuse answers as to why he wanted this porch, uh, Margaret later disclosed the real reason, which was that Bess Truman, who hated Washington, hated the public spotlight, hated being photographed, uh, she wanted privacy and there was really no place in the White House that you could get it. Truman hoped simply that by building a balcony, he would give his wife a place to relax in the summer and maybe she would not go back home to Missouri, which is what she had developed the habit of doing almost from the beginning. With a beautiful view, by the way. Yes, and though I've been to the Truman House in Missouri and the view from their porch is just as lovely, although there's no ellipse uh, to look at. Uh, But that idea backfired because the porch that was supposed to afford best some some privacy ended up making her more of a spectacle when she sat out there the photographers lined up, took her picture. She freaked out and went home anyway. The rebuild. We've mentioned Edgerton and McShane. These are the men doing the heavy lifting. The architect. His name is Lorenzo Will- Winslow. Lorenzo Winslow. And he comes from the South, and he works diligently. Uh, and uh, Robert's research has gone to the extent that he's seen the blueprints, he's seen the designs. He's also got a hold of the diary, thanks to your deep, Detailed researches. And in the diary, we learn that Mr. Winslow, while he is directing the architecture of the rebuild of the White House, is often traveling. He has companions, some named mysteriously J and M, that he sees regularly during the weeks in Washington, and another named William T. Steed, who we're told occupied stateroom C-89 on the Titanic in 1912. How exactly did Mr. Steed get involved in the rebuild of the White House? Well, you're seeing the chronological problem, I trust. Uh, Mr. Steed's (laughs) time came considerably before the White House rebuild. Uh, Mr. Steed was one of the early proponents of spiritualism in his day. He was a medium. He believed in channeling, automatic writing. Uh, He believed that he could uh, allow the unliving to communicate with the living. One of the believers of that process was Lorenzo Winslow. And in his diary, I kept finding these confusing notations that said wonderful messages from the master, but he would never elaborate. 
And then finally I found a note said, went to Steed Memorial, and I looked it up and found that there was one only a few blocks from my apartment. It's still there uh, on uh, Fifth Avenue in the Central Park retaining wall at 91st Street. And it turns out that uh, Winslow was attending seances secretly and communicating with Steed, who was in turn channeling the spirits of dead presidents, who in turn were apparently giving some type of counsel on the rebuilding of the house. And there's a photograph of this memorial up on your website. Yes. Yes. I understand you've been in contact with the, some re- remainders of these seances? Uh, well, uh, I, I have... Certainly, I haven't been in touch with the spirits. Uh, uh, I've been to the Steed site, and I went at night, and I went by myself and waited for something to happen, but nothing did. Wow, that's pretty pretty courageous um, in Central Park at night. What I am in possession of are some relics of the White House itself, Wonderful. the pieces left over from the rebuild. How did you find them? How did I find them? I'd love to tell you that I have inside connections. Right, the truth right. is I found them on this mysterious place called eBay. Yes. Wow. Um, and like everything else on eBay, one must be careful of fakes. But uh, one of the problems that they had when they renovated the house is they had tons and tons of construction debris. They didn't know what to do with it. Uh, They did not want to sell it. They didn't want to bury it. They were afraid people would dig it up. So what they decided to do is give it away as an official souvenir program sponsored by the United States government. All you had to do was pay for the shipping. They would send you a catalog and you could get anything you wanted from a chip of plaster all the way up to enough foundation stone to build a fireplace. And I was able to get a hold of this catalog and through those descriptions was able to verify some of these artifacts that I saw floating around on the web. Some of them are fake, but the two that I have, I'm, I'm quite certain are real. They were authentication plates that they affixed to each one of them. April 22nd, 1952 is the date I have for the opening of the reawakened White House. The television cameras attended. It was a great success. Huge. Was Truman satisfied? Initially, for the cameras, yes, he was absolutely overjoyed. When the cameras went home, he changed his mind. That night, Bess had been invited to a charity dinner, and she left him alone in the house. And as he walked around the house, he admired the craftsmanship, but started to have second thoughts about whether all of this work that had taken so long and cost so much really had been worth it. The Hidden White House, Harry Truman and the Reconstruction of America's Most Famous Residence, Robert Clara's the author, Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal, and the host of Opinion Journal, each day at 1 p.m. East Coast time at WSJ.com. I'm John Batchelor.